Hey guys, I'm gonna cover one of the biggest pain points that you might be pounding your head against a wall with as an affiliate marketer, which is when your offer doesn't convert. And we're gonna cover seven conversion killers that you might have on your page right now. I get affiliate marketers coming to me every single day frustrated because they're not getting the results that they expect from their landing pages. So we're gonna cover seven of the biggest common mistakes that those um, people are making on their landing pages. Starting first off, what I like to call walls of text. So we look at this offer here, it's actually got a pretty decent headline, but every single time you go through and you see some text messages, you're met with a big fat clump of writing. No one wants to read a big clump of writing. And if you think about it, just in general, like when you see a big wall or a big textbook, your first thing is, ugh, I'm not sure I wanna read that. That's gonna take a long time. So when you see these walls and clumps of text, it's going to take people either not to read the text message or bounce from your page as a whole. You wanna keep things single sentences, maybe two sentences at a time as you write your copy, because the goal of one line is just to get them to the next line, avoiding these big clumps and breaking out your copy so your page is longer, but easier to read will immediately boost your conversions. All right, number two, you're not telling any story. There's no flow to your landing page. Oftentimes we see a lot of people that think, well, I have a great offer, here's a lot of benefits, I'm gonna throw it out there, but it's really hard to follow as a reader or even understand what I'm trying to read. Um, it's not skimmable. So we could see an example right here where we see the product name is a diabetes diet coach app or coaching app, but in here, there's not really much of a flow. It's just kind of bouncing around, there's some reviews. I don't even really know what the product is and eventually now I'm being sold something. When you have an in, a non-cohesive page, it doesn't flow, I can't skim through it. It's just gonna look confusing and I can't identify, do I really need this? Do I even need to spend some time trying to looking for it? So if your page is not cohesive and focused in terms of experience and a story, you have a problem and you're probably not gonna get the conversions that you're striving, striving for. Number three, you're telling no story. So anytime you have an offer, if you're, you wanna tell some story of why people need it, it could be anecdotal, it could be real, it could be an origin story, something that's gonna elicit an emotional response. As we can see here, we have a product that's just saying what it is. Pop guard Google Chrome extension. Well, what is that? Why do I need it? Where's the story behind it? There's nothing really going on here, just a blank generic page. If you have no story in your page, if you're not telling anybody, you're not creating something that's engaging, you're definitely missing an opportunity with your conversions and missing an opportunity to create a winning offer. Number four, you might have gone a little bit too niche, too specific. So right here, this is actually a really good sales page. It's got a nice headline going into a video. I mean, the video uh, GIF might be a little bit off, but they have such a narrow audience. There's probably a group of individuals who would really respond to this, but if that group is 10, you're gonna really consistently struggle to you know, scale using affiliates, scale your offer on a broad level. There is such a thing as going too small. So when you look at something like this, ask yourself if you're struggling to get conversions, is my pool big enough? Are you trying to fish out of a thimble? Or are you th fishing out of a lake? Go find your lake if you've gone too specific. Number five, one of the biggest things that people tend to really struggle with is they're not following any sort of format or flow to their sales page. So we could see here that we lack much of a headline. There doesn't seem to be much of a formula. There's just sections that are being written in here. One of the things I always recommend for people, if you don't have a copywriting formula that you're following when you're writing your sales pages, you're missing an opportunity. I'd highly recommend following things like the RMBC method. There's Copy Chief, Stefan Georgi, Perry Belcher has great resources. Read the Boren letters. We'll make sure to include that in the, in the description, in the comments um, for those resources to go find them, but you need to find yourself a flow. Copywriting has been around and selling has been around for a really long time and we keep buying in the exact same way. So if you're just thinking you're gonna figure it out, invent something new, don't fight against history. Find a flow that works and invent it in terms of maybe your hook or your angle. That's where you could be creative, not in forms that we scientifically know make people wanna buy stuff. So don't get lost and meander through your pages. Get an actual formula if you wanna have good conversions. Number six. Don't over-design your page. If you have an over-designed page and it just looks distracting and weird, you're gonna drive trust down and you're gonna distract people from what you're actually selling. We can see, see here in this example of a page, it's got 
bright colors, lots of big images. Um, the text is moving from place to place. There's weird formatting things. It just aesthetically looks odd. A big massive image of I don't know what. Um, these are things where it almost feels over-designed. It feels distracting. Because what you really want isn't people to see a bunch of images or see that you kind of know how to use HTML. You want them to read your copy and flow down and understand the story, read your sales messaging, take in those benefits so when they get to the CTA, they actually want to commit. If you're trying to push a bunch of designs and images and make things look sexy and cool, um, you're more likely often than not going to make something that looks awkward and clunky and unappealing to most people and probably your consumers as well. Tailor things back, make it simple, and understand that your goal is either to get them to watch a video or read text through the page, not necessarily be impressed by what images and things that you're putting on there. Number seven, and this is a big one, but a really easy one to fix, and that's when people put their CTA or their buy button way too early in their page. So for the example that we have here, you could actually see that there's two CTA buttons above the fold, meaning when you first load the page. Why is that a problem? If people want to buy, shouldn't they buy really fast? Not necessarily, because what happens is as soon as they get an opportunity to buy, you lose an opportunity to keep selling. So as you want to move those CTA buttons down, lower into your copy and have more opportunities to be able to sell and get them ready to convert and prime to convert before you pop that button and they actually get to make the decision. Because as soon as they have the opportunity to hit that button and they click it, it's now out of your hands and they're most likely gonna make a price decision, not a value decision, which isn't gonna work for you. So we covered a lot of things there and I want you to go back if you're struggling with conversions right now and make sure that none of those elements exist on your page and you're gonna be on the path to having better conversions and that offer that you've really been waiting for. Be sure to subscribe and like our content to make sure you could keep getting it and keep getting the tidbits that you need to be successful. Have a good one.